going on everybody? Day it is. Good. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Good. What's up, Alex? Ha <laughs> ha. Ah. Ah. It's two o'clock in Germany right now. Is that what you're saying? Uh-oh. The imposter lineup. <laughs> can we find can we find can we find the Alex lineup anywhere? Uh-oh. I thought that was you in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You are in there where? We probably have to go back, back, back. Is that you right there, uh, Jacksonville, Florida? <laughs> Is that you in there? Is that you in there, Alex? I'm only going to play it if you're in it, though. <laughs> so I'm not starting it until Alex gives me the okay. <laughs> no, he's not in that one either. <laughs> there you are there. But you're not playing. Yeah, it's tough because there's there's a lot of live footage in here. What about uh, Goraphobia Live at Club Babyhead 1992? Is that you? Alex left in 91. Oh, shit. So, yeah. The only fun footage that's up there with Alex. Oh, is that Alex there? Asbury Park, New Jersey, 91. <laughs> Fucking Def Leppard. Pyromania and under. All good. Is that you and Asbury there, 91? I think it is. I'm not starting it until it, until it's Alex's. <laughs> What's up, Trav? Trav Webster and puncture wound. <clears throat> Maybe.
No, I won't pour some sugar. That's terrible. Terrible Death Leopard. Hysteria is terrible. Enrique, you already had your turn. Turn it off then, right? <laughs> you gotta find me some footage with you in it, Alex. We get Roy to give us the updates then, too. Get uh Working obviously. Not whoever's on here. I got that old Alex shit. I got that Alex shit. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, we're gonna have Video. to. We're gonna. We're gonna have to fix that because, like you said, man, that's that, there's no there's no there's no Alex footage uh, in Goraphobia on there. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I don't. You know what? I never. I've never been like a huge uh, uh, YouTube uploader, so you know. I don't know. Well, then that stuff's going to stay in the vault unless I get it somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or if you were uh, tape trading with me, maybe like in 1996, you know? Oh, shit. Like we video traded. <laughs> so what's going on, my man? What's happening? Yeah, everything's chilling, you know? Just layering in the Necroharmonic Castle and um, 
upstate New York, just same bullshit, different day, you know, out with the fucking masks on, like an alien planet, fucking zombie, Holocaust, you know, <laughs> fucking nightmare city, fucking plant, you know, yeah. wearing the masks and shit, just waiting for the zombies to come out. <laughs> But you're keeping busy working in your basement, though. Yeah, and make, yeah. And making, yep. sh- making I mean, sure... I just don't work in my basement. I work in the rest <laughs> of my house, too. But, um, you know, just like any male, I guess I just get... I end up in a fucking basement, you know? <laughs> That's where I am right now, too. <laughs> yeah, see? Of course, you, you, see? you get like, pushed down like, there all the time. Males, yeah. you know? You end up rebuilt in our basements. <laughs> We pretty much turn them into our caves anyway, so we're good down here. Uh, yeah. So so with this Alex stuff, um, you hung around those guys a lot back in the day, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, back in the day, it was like, um, you know, I got to give really a big shout out to John McEntee. Because, like, without John McEntee, there wouldn't, a lot of shows and things that I did when I was younger... I wouldn't have done, you know, because uh, he really wanted to go to fucking shows, and so did I. There was other people, too, that wanted to go to shows, but basically, like, fucking, this guy would drive this fucking piece of shit fucking boat all over the place, and we would go to fucking, you know, not right outside Philadelphia, that's a Pensalkin, to go to see fucking shows at G. Willikers. And uh, the shows were fucking, like, one epic fucking show after another. A lot of start of a lot of, like, bands that were, you know, might be bigger now, you know, obviously. But back then, you know, it was just underground fucking shows. And uh, the lineups were stacked even back then for us, you know, like, you know, fucking nuclear death or something. You know what I mean? If you got that record and you were like, holy shit, this band is playing, you know, within an, two hours of my fucking house. Right. And McAtee's fucking driving. <laughs> then I'm fucking going. <laughs> I didn't have a fucking license. I didn't have a fucking license. You know what I mean? I, but I was going, there, you know? Right on, right on. So, obviously, like, a lot of people bring up back then uh that bar g willikers that was one of the venues that pretty much housed a shit ton of fucking shows yes yes there was a there was a girl there her name was frantic ann and she was from philadelphia and she would set off all kinds of shows there and you know all the best shit would play there you know the earliest shows from like suffocation immolation incantation mortician ex mortem this fatal, you know, like Hell Witch, um, you know, the list just fucking goes on and on, deceased, um, you know, just like, just fucking, just go, and then the national acts suddenly kind of caught on to play in there too, so there would be fucking death and fucking carcass and fucking god flesh in these small ass fucking clubs where you could stand like fucking... 10 feet away from them and fucking watch them fucking fucking annihilate the fucking place <laughs> you know so that was a good fucking scene you know oh man i mean some of the shows would be smaller you know there might only be like 30 40 heads there but usually people were fucking going nuts you know it wasn't you know it was just um you know just like a death metal show you might go to you know like a regular one and fucking 2020 you know right yeah yeah like like you but, said you know, there was some bigger shows there too and it was it, you know the place was a, i don't even know what the place was like because you know, the only you know it only went outside to either smoke fucking drugs or watch <laughs> fucking parts of the show or shot the shit with my friends i didn't even go in the bar in there for like fucking years on end because i didn't i wasn't 21 you know i was like a, I was like a younger dude you know? <laughs> Like, I was a youngin, even amongst some of, you know, some of the people that were going there, you know, it might have been, like, 17 or something, you know? Right, right, right. So, so but, you, uh, but you attended a lot of shit back then, and you hung out with all those dudes back in the day when... when I you... hung out, and I attended a fucking everything, because the way, like, the situation was, too, which was smart as a band guy, you know, with McEntee, was that he fucking would go to every fucking show and he would pass out his fucking flyers. 
and we would cut them up in the fucking car. Jeff Wolf knows, <laughs> and other people like that, because we would cut up the flyers in the car or whatever the fuck we were doing, and we would go to a show and we'd be like, promote, promote, promote. And that was good, you know, and that was smart, you know what I mean? Well, that's um, that's what you're supposed to do for marketing. That's that's exactly yeah. the game. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to really shout him out. Fuck. He knows, too. I'm sure he knows. Fucking, we had, fuck, you know, we had a lot of good times, not just at the shows there, but, like, you know, just on the fast food spots and everything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So, what got you into death metal, though? What was that? What was that pivotal moment that yeah. all of a sudden was like, "Holy shit!" Uh, you know, it was probably like a lot of things. You know, just like every other fucking asshole. Like, you know, you know, you listen to fucking thrash metal, and then eventually you just fucking go down that deeper spot. You know, yeah. but um. <laughs> You know, like, if I think about, like, the most, you know, some of the earlier death metal that was, you know, I heard, you know, obviously, where I felt like it was fucking death metal was probably, even probably, like, when, you know, you heard, like, earache stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you were like, okay, this is fucking death metal. Yeah. Or, like, you know, I mean, it could have been, like, obituary, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really think I thought of possessed death you know at seven churches as death metal at its time but right. i mean now maybe but, but not then i saw it more as like a thrash metal you know sure. yeah, totally. but i mean you know like the, you know or obviously fucking death you know i mean they're death metal you know <laughs> so you know so and, i mean there was demo scenes back then too but they were like in the thrash fucking metal zone I mean, in a way, it was like from the heavy metal zone to the thrash metal zone to the death metal zone, you know? Yep, no, totally. It's just the natural progression, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, I mean, it's hard It's hard to really pick them down, but, I mean, uh, reading the fanzines, just like anyone else, you know? I heard Ed Farsley's name brought up in this. Yep. And I would attribute him to be one of my, one of my fucking... Because the thing is, when back to when he put out his fucking Z, he put a fucking everyone's address in it. So if you were a fucking creepazoid like me, you used to, you were fucking writing a letter to every fucking band in there almost and being like, "What's up? You know, fucking you playing any shows?" Ba ba ba. And that was the only way you could fucking communicate with other fucking people back then. Yeah. Because you know we were we're old. You know I don't know. <laughs> I mean I know how to communicate with fucking younger people now. But, I mean, obviously, we had to communicate through, like, fucking corded telephones and fucking letters. Yeah. Letters. Yeah. You Literally. Know, imagine that. Handwriting, man. That's all you did was, yeah, like like, like yeah, you said, how's yeah. it going? What's up? You coming around town? You know, let me buy your demo for five bucks. Yeah, and you would even talk about bands through there. You'd be like, hey, did you hear the new Testaments? You know? Yeah. It was like the fucking, it would be like six weeks later, maybe you'd get that letter, you know? Yeah. It was cool, though. It was it, fucking cool, man. It was it, good shit. It totally was. So, uh, let me introduce Mr. Roy Fox here. Uh, he's like you mentioned. He's hanging out in the Necro Harmonic Dungeon, doing his uh, doing his thing, and been doing it for fucking. Well, when when did when did you get Necro Harmonic going? Like, what was the what was the point Necro of all of that? Necro Harmonic was started around like ninety ninety one, and uh, it basically spawned from fucking doing cassette tapes for Gorophobia and Leshnayan. Those were the first, you know, like, first, like, distro, distro tapes. Like, I met some dudes. I met I met Alex from Gorophobia, fucking at G. Willikers. And I uh, watched Gorophobia and got blown away by them many times over. You know, they, you know, I didn't know what the status of their cassette was back in the day. And they, um, they were having trouble doing their mail because they were probably spending the money on beer. Not Chris, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, basically, you know, at the time, you know, it was like, yo, and also with McEntee, I was like, you know, you need some help with your mail or whatever. And then I swear from that time, it was just like more addresses stacked on for me. You know what I mean? So, like, I just would write to everybody, you know. I wasn't, you know, it was weird, man. It was cool, though. It was like... But then when there was, you know, uh, Agoraphobia's demo and they gave me the cover and shit, 
with the Phil uh, from Nuclear Death artwork and the lyrics and shit, which was non-existent for the first X amount of months I known them because I would just watch them live. And then they, I saw them live before I actually heard them. You know what I mean? Right. And then, uh, then I met Les Schneien in like '91 or something. And then, then uh, my boy Billy Benner, uh, who definitely is another person that's really influential on in my life in death metal shit. Um, fucking yeah, I met um, Les Schneien, and then Billy Benner drew like a Necroharmonic fucking logo. You know what I'm saying? And then, I, then I was Necroharmonic. You know? <laughs> So why did you want to start this, though? Start doing that? Because the thing is, I wanted to spread the music of the bands, you know? I'm not in a fucking band, which is rare. Because most of the fucking fans and the shows I went to over fucking 30 fucking years, it was like there was people, everybody was in a fucking band, man. Except for me, man. <laughs> and then maybe a couple other fucking people. So, like, in a way, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be involved with spreading the fucking music of the bands that I like. And that way, fuck it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it did, it did lead to me meeting a lot of fucking cool motherfuckers. And hopefully some of them are uh, popped into this chat right now. I didn't even look. Yeah, I think but they are. That's, I think what, they that's are. what's up. Yeah, totally. Um, what's up? Yeah, man. So, uh. So you started it as a like mini distribution. Yeah, that's right. It was like a distribution. And then maybe by like 93 or so, 92 and 93, my friend Oscar Matter fucking was like, yo, you should put out this release. You should put out my band, Ceremonium. Oh, and then yeah. I put out the first fucking seven inch of Ceremonium. So I, Oscar is also fucking part of Necroharmonic. And I lived with Oscar and everything. He's my boy. <laughs> What's up, Oscar? <laughs> uh, we used to smoke out to, with that cattle press every day. Yep. You better be watching then. <laughs> That's amazing. So you ended up putting out that ceremonium on 7-inch, like under Necroharmonic yeah. like Records or whatever? Yeah. Basically, at the time, I, um, I found... You know, I think, I don't know who I found it out through, but maybe I found it out directly from them. But um, Seraphic DK Records, I wanted to put out records from the same factory that they put them out. Because yeah. I thought their records sounded good, you yeah. know? So I went to the factory that fucking put out Seraphic DK's fucking vinyls. And then I got the Ceremonium fucking 7 inch pressed up. Sweet. How many copies was that out? We did like a thousand copies, I believe. That was wow. it. Wow, and it obviously sold out. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, the record was sold out, but I ended up doing thousands of extra seven-inch covers that are still in my closet. After, t like, they moved with me like five times. <laughs> God damn! So you got some unreleased yeah. covers? Is I mean, that what you know, it is? Just it, you know, like I had a print shop offset the printing shit because even getting shit printed back then was fucking weird dude it wasn't like today you know right it wasn't like just some place online i could go to and get some shit printed i had to go to a fucking thing and you know like i had to cut the fucking shit up with my fucking scissors and shit you know what i mean <laughs> i had to get like films and like you know figure out shit with the yeah. fucking printer guy yeah it was cool yeah. it was cool because it was like i was stepping more into graphic arts I didn't realize it at the time now, you know, I just wanted to put out a fucking doom fucking seven inch <laughs> death metal, you know, with my boys from Staten Island, you know? <laughs> so after that, what, uh, what, what was next after that? All right. After that, like I was already starting to correspond with like the really fucking sleazy fucking bands like gut. <laughs> And then I started writing to this weirdo who, uh, his name was Ali Roder. And, um, we, he, I was listening, I was actually at my friend's house fucking just, we smoked a bunch of weed in his closet or whatever. His name was Adam Martin, RIP, Adam. Fucking, we smoked a bunch of weed in his closet. And then I was listening to Gut on, on the headphones by myself. 
And I was like, wow, dude, this is fucking heavy, man. And, and it was the first seven inches type stuff. And it was something that I had put out eventually, like part of it. You know what I mean? Like one third of it, let's say. Right. Which, uh, and then, uh, I don't know, I started writing to these guys because I wanted, I was writing to Pyogenesis at first. And then the guys from Pyogenesis were in gut. And I was right. I wasn't just writing to one fucking guy either. I was writing to fucking two or three different guys in the band because I was a fucking weirdo like that. I would write. I would like write to everybody, dude. Oh, because it was fun, man. Yeah, and I would try to make it fucking spicy too, man. I would throw in cassettes. I would throw in a dollar, an IRC, whatever the fuck they wanted, you know. A fuck two IRCs. I remember the place at the post office was like, what the fuck is an IRC? I'm like, I don't fucking know. You selling them? The guy's like, yeah, I got them. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> so you obviously just kept the name going and trying to help out bands, put shit out, or whatever, right? That's right. The whole time. Yeah. The, the whole time, I yeah, moved from seven, you know, I put out a couple seven inches. So I put out Gut, and I put out Ceremonium, and then uh, I was putting out cassettes, too. I started putting out, like, you know, I was trying to put out, I was putting out whatever I listened to, basically. But obviously, I was listening to Death Metal, but I was listening to, like, these other bands that no one was fucking listening to in a weird, at the time, at the time. Right. You know, like, Gut, you know? Like, no one was fucking with that, you know? Like, it was, like, pornographic. It was like really low and fucking weird sounding, you know, at that time. So like everyone was kind of like, what the fuck is this, you know? And I was like, yo, this is the porn gore shit, you know? And this was really early on. I mean, in my, you know, my opinion. Yeah, no, totally. So with them and say like I was putting out tapes with like catasexual urge motivation and shit. And I was writing heavy with those guys and um you know like i was gonna put out their album and shit you know what i mean it was like i would talk to these bands and we would like almost negotiate through the fucking mail and that you know like i, I wasn't ready to take on too much but there was t you know what i did over the years you know like if you look at my discography of how many releases i put out compared to the rest of the labels it's a lot smaller but the thing is, like, the bands that I put out were almost very specific and fucking, like, I felt like they were the better of the bands, you know what I mean? Right. Not yeah. to be, like, too my horn, you know? No, no, but no. But I tried to put out, you know, what I liked and not not what I thought was going to fucking sell because, you know, I don't give a fuck about any of that fucking shit. I just care about the love of the music and not about what's going to sell, you know? Right. And people did question me over the years because I put out some releases and they thought like, oh, you put that out because it's going to sell. And I'm like, what? Like, I put this out because I went to their fucking practice and they reminded me of a motherfucking ripping corpse at the moment. And that's why I put it out. So, you know, there's a lot of confusion about, you know, certain releases. Wow. You know, from what I put out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I straddled like kind of most of the different subjects genres the gore grind death metal black metal a little um you know maybe grind core porno grind uh you know what i mean whatever else whatever else fucking sub genre <laughs> <laughs> but you loved it all though whatever. that was the thing what you loved it all that was the thing yeah, I just put out whatever I was, whatever like I was listening to and shit. And most of the stuff was stuff that I, I tried to, I see, I was like seeking, I was always seeking, you know? Totally. It's like I was seeking like the next fucking thing, the next thing. Like what's, you know, what's, what's good, what's good, what's good, you know? And I, I mean, I'm not really that much different now. I don't seek as much death metal, I don't think. I think I seek music now, you know what I mean? Yes, everything. But I do seek new death metal too, you know what I mean? Like, we're a lot of old school heads now. They don't give a fuck about new death metal, but I, I do, actually, you know? Oh, yeah. And there's certain bands that I listen to that I think are fucking, yeah, that's what's up. Oh, there's some amazing new shit that's coming out lately. Yeah. Totally. Like, like who, who you liking nowadays? 
I like um, I like fetid and yeah. I like um, cemetery and you know from Texas. Yep. And uh, undergang, you yep. know. And Anatomia seemed like they slipped in that little young cat zone, but they're yeah. not. They're my age. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a couple other bands like Cerebral Rot or yeah. something. I don't totally. know. You know, yeah, those no. are all fucking dope shit. Totally, like, man. Totally. So you're still going nowadays. Necroharmonic never really went away. You just kind of would slow down a little bit and then pick up, slow down yeah. a little bit. And now lately, you've been really fucking pushing it lately. I mean, I just, I've been trying to bring back like a distro, you know what I mean? And then I also, you know, I've been trying to put out like tapes and shit. Like I've just been like rolling with the, you know, rolling with the scene a little bit, I guess, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, like it's some, you know, some part of me is like, doesn't want to compromise and be like, fuck tapes. But the other part of me is like, dude, you have fucking like rooms full of fucking tapes. Like, what the fuck? You don't want to fuck with tapes? What are you stupid? You know? <laughs> so I have to like justify. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you're the one with the fucking tapes. You have all these fucking wooden racks full of tapes, but you don't want to put out tapes? Like, what the fuck? You're like, put out some fucking tapes. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going into your own stash? So, yeah, I mean, I'm all over the place. You know, we produce, you know. <laughs> what? You're you're putting out your what, own... What'd you say? Sorry, uh, we, we're just getting a little bit of delay going on here. Um, I, I think everybody upstairs is fucking streaming the shit out of everything. Um, so you're going into your own stash and starting to distribute stuff? Um, I feel like I've always been going into my stash, you know what I mean? Like, basically, like, you know, I, I am a fucking squirrel, basically, you know? Like, I'm, like, part fucking squirrel when it comes to music. So, basically, like, <laughs> you know, like, there's a bunch, there's so many different things that I put in my squirrel stash that, like, I was like, oh, this would be fucking sick to be put out as a release, you know? And then, like, it just sits there for, like, I'm talking about 25 years or something, dude. You know, like a long ass time, you know? Like, there's shit like this that, you know, basically like decay, you know? This was their demo fucking rehearsal. Jesus. And Sal Sejo, who played on the Incantation first demo, he was in that band with, um, you know, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Esmerim and um, fuck. Fr oh, we're getting cut off here, Roy. Sorry. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec here. Hold on. That's cool. There's just some lagging going on. Just checking some shit out there. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, so, like you said, you have some shit that's just... Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Future fact. I can't hear you now, Roy. I can't hear you now, Roy. Weird. Here, let me call you back. Hold on a sec. Here, let's figure this out, people. Sorry about that. Just got some major lagging going on. We just got lots of lag going on here. Yeah. There we go. Back? There we go. Okay. All right. All right, cool. You off like a fucking bottle rocket. Yeah, man. <laughs> you got to make sure this shit's good. Um, so you just showed the Putrefact demo. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. That's a fucking. I was thinking about putting that out, you know? I was going to put out some old future fact shit, you know? And I was going to put out some old decay shit. And, um, like, recently I put out a couple cassettes with this uh, label called Parasitic Records. We put out Disciples of Mockery and we put out um, Crematory Denial. Yes. Cassettes. Yes. Oh, you've oh you oh you got the crematory on cassettes now. Yeah, was, we just put the denial uh, EP on cassette. You know, we did like some co-op shit. Yeah, I'm gonna do some co-op shit. Um, also with my boy Roger from Mortician, and he's my fucking man. You know. Oh fuck, that but, is rad. Yeah, you know, we talk all the time, and he definitely has been a big fucking help for Necro Harmonic for years, and he's my boy. You know. Yeah, totally. Uh, said, what's up to him? You you helped a lot out with Mortician in the early years too, correct? I I was at like I wasn't at the very very first Mortician show, but I was at the second Mortician show, <laughs> and basically it, it was Mortician and Incantation and Snag. I um I wrote a letter to Revenant actually, or I went to see Revenant and I thought they were good, right? So I wrote a letter to Revenant. And then I got a letter back from John McEntee, and he told me, I'm not in Revenant anymore. I'm in this band called Incantation, right? So I fucking, uh, he's, I was like, cool. And then for some reason, like, I don't know how I got his phone number. And then, like, I don't know if I got his phone number or we went to the show. He sent me a flyer, and then he said, we're playing a show. Do you want? It's death metal, you know? And I was like, all right, I'll just, I'm, so... I swear, like, I rounded up, like, eight fucking people from my town. So it was, like, Bill Venner, who is in Gizma. And then um, there was, it's like, my boy Steimer. Uh, there was my boy Blast, R.I.P. And there was uh, Eric Zuckiel, R.I.P. And there was the Kincaids. And there was Adam Martin, R.I.P. So a bunch of my friends that went to the show, they passed away, passed away you know, which is weird. But fucking, um, we went to this one show, it was Mortician, Snag, and, and Incantation, and we didn't even know what the fuck they sounded like, and we went in, right, fucking Mortician is the first band on, dude, we were like, holy fucking shit, dude, this is so fucking heavy, man, holy shit, like, they were so fucking brutal, you know? It was so brutal, man. And we were just staring at each other, just shocked, dude. And then next thing you know, we were just participating in the show, you know? And then fucking the incantation played right after Mortician. And uh, they were just as fucking brutal. And they had the same fucking singer, too. You know, it was almost like the same fucking band came out, but it was like a different band, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And then... Uh, then afterwards, there was a fucking riot and shit, and, like, there was, there was a bunch of, you know, like, so everything about the show was fun. <laughs> Spring Valley Death Crew was there, because that was, like, Mortician's fucking click, and they went there, they fucking just devastated, you know? Jesus. Shout out to them. Shout out to Matt Harshner, who was in Mortician. Oh, God. Shout out to Jeff Wolf. So the show's Shout like... Shout out to Mike Simmons. Jesus. <laughs> Anybody else? I mean, I could just keep going on and on and on and on. It's like, dude, there's like the thing is with me and death metal too. Like, I've I've been the person who like went up to everybody and talked to everybody because I guess I just didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm a big dude. I'm like six foot fucking three. So like, maybe you know, I might be one of the bigger dudes there. You know, so like I just. Don't give a fuck about anyone, you know, like anything. So I would just approach myself to everybody at the show and be like, what's up? You know? Yeah. Like, you know, like I'd start talking metal to them or be like nice ball thrower shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I liked it, you know? So like, it, that's just, that's me though. I mean, anybody that knows me knows that I'm just like fucking, you can't even shut me up after a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But you hung out like 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 you said you hung out at these shows and with these bands and you were like a you were a diehard at the time right you were helping with merch yeah. you were helping with merch you were help you were going to shows with yep. everybody and and just helping bands I was, out. I was helping with merch yeah I would like work the merch booth 
I paid for incantation to record fucking the first stage of the on March of Ugafa section. Like they were getting paid, but I don't think they got paid at that moment. So I went to this Tracks E studio with them. So I was there when I was there when the, I was thinking about this today because everybody was talking about incantation. Yep. And they were talking about the onward to Gogotha. So like I was there with them when they recorded that album at that studio, Tracks East. Like I went to a bunch of the sessions for that. You know what I mean? Like I was there for the one a session that I put out, which is the blasphemous cremation recording. Right. And then I was there for a remix where Will came in and they did a remix of Seven Inch for Relapse. And I was there again when they were recording some parts. I was there for the entire thing for parts of get they re recorded the whole fucking album again, you know? And um because, you know, we had listened to the Morphous fucking side of the record or whatever, which I got on a fucking tape trade or whatever from Amorphous. <laughs> and John you know, John was like, Oh, I think we should you know, re-record the entire record, you know? Jesus. So, it was cool, man. I mean, I remember Tracks East. I remember, you know, Dave, uh, no, what was his name? Uh, whoever uh, the engineer was. And we went down and ate fucking, you know, at set, we, we did the record, they did the recording like in the middle of the night from like 11 p.m. to like 7 a.m. or some shit. Jesus. So I remember going down into the diner afterwards and like, being there with Ronnie Dio, the bassist, you know? And, uh, you know, we were ordering up some food and shit, and we were talking to the waitress, and she was like, oh, you know, this uh, whoever engineer, you know, we're supposed to bring him up some food or some shit. <laughs> God it damn. It was good time, so I used to hang out with Incantation all the time in Jim Rowe's basement. Shout out to Jim. And his family and everybody, everybody, you know, Craig Pillard and uh, McEntee and Ronnie and Dirty Dave and anyone who was involved back, you know, <laughs> that, you know, and then I would go to Incantations jams, you know, like I would maybe go to Ronnie's house and get picked up or something. And McEntee would drive to South Plainfield or North Plainfield or wherever. And then I would go to like incantation practices and shit. And then, so I heard some of the metamorphosis of the songs too, from going from right. like being shorter to like longer and shit. Right. And more for, uh, for and... onward to Bogotha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they would play like the demo songs too. And I, I remember being one of the first people to hear the song Blasphemous Cremation. You know what I mean? Holy fuck. Just that whole album, period, man. It's is there's there's such a raw brutal sound to it and like you said too yeah. they re-recorded -re the whole album and it wouldn't have sounded like that if they didn't hear that what'd you say amorphous yeah they listened to the amorphous it was supposed to be a split record with amorphous it was supposed to be incantation on one side and amorphous on the other i guess on relapse or something and then uh they re-recorded the entire thing um yeah i don't know Wow. I ended up with I ended up with one cassette tape of the original recording, which was it was like a rough mix basically. And then that that became some like tape like that no one had. Like just I had it, you know. Right. And I was like, we should put this out, you know. And then we put it out, you know. Which well, is cool. Right. Uh, and, and, know, and, and it, it and, sounded brutal. And you put it out just recently, correct too, right? No, I put it out I, it was called Blasphemous Cremation. And I put it out like I don't even know, oh, probably shit. Like fifteen years ago. Okay, all right, yeah, okay. I put out recently a compilation of their demos. Yeah, that's that was right. More, more recent. You that's know? right. And that was like their demos and um, a bunch of live, unreleased shit that just maybe like I had some of it, mostly just shit from my archive. You know. Yeah. There's more too. There's, like, so much other incantation shit, too, but, like, how much fucking incantation can I put out? I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? I love other, you know, I love them, but, like, you know, and I, and I don't know, you know, I don't know who, you know, it's, it's all good. I think, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's enough fan there's enough fans out there that would want to, more of the, uh, the underground, unreleased shit that nobody's mm. ever heard and stuff like that. Right. Of course, man, of course. Um, I guess so. so you, like you said, you've been putting out some shit recently too. Um, 
Uh, you had the uh, you sent it to me, which was unbelievable. The phlegm, uh, complete oh, the, phlegm. The, yeah, the, yeah. the complete I discography. The, uh, I talked to the bassist from Phlegm yesterday. Actually, he called me up because he's like, "How do you eat eBay?" <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, Fred? Um, fucking uh, what do you call it? You know, we were talking, we were shooting the shit about like strategies on there, you know. But um, yeah, I put out the Phlegm the Flem demos and Flem was also another band that basically like I met them on, you know, met them quickly at G Willikers. They played a show there, but then they, they formed, you know, along with Mac and T to say like, Hey, let's do some shit together. You know? So those guys set up a tour and then I went on the tour with them. It was in 91 and we went to like Texas, Louisiana and Florida and fucking, we stayed at Paul from Splattery, his house, and shout out to Paul and his house and his mother and family and everybody for putting <laughs> us up for fucking two fucking weeks. And we had anal cunt, phlegm, and incantation in this fucking guy's house for fucking like two weeks straight. So, I feel bad for them now. Like, I feel bad for his family. Like, I didn't understand, like, we stayed there that entire time. Like, at, at the end, we started to parse out a little, but, uh, <laughs> fucking, what do you call it? So, basically, I went on tour with these guys, and I became really good friends with Flem, you know? And I ended up riding in North, their tour bus a little bit, like, you know, once we linked up. Because me and Ronnie Dio, we wanted to smoke the fucking, from the body glove fucking, he had this hidden compartment in his fucking drink fucking cup where like underneath was like this fucking stash of weed you know and like <laughs> if the cops came we could like throw it in the back and just act like it's a bottle or something you know? <laughs> so what was it like touring with anal cunt then with anal cunt yeah fucking it was awesome dude i mean they were cool as fuck i mean this was tim at the time seth and Fred only, and then they had a they had a, a girl driving them around. Okay. Her name was like Rebecca or something. I don't remember. But it's fucking um, they it was just the three, and they were fucking they were basically it was like pre morbid fucking Florist. You know what I mean? As far as like the sound and all, you know what I mean? Right. All of the era, you know. So they were playing up and just like kind of just jamming out those songs because. And it's funny because I taped the fucking, I had a small tape player with me, so I taped, like, everything that was happening, dude. And they went out on the porch to fucking practice, and they didn't even have drums, or they had a guitar, it was unplugged, and they had Seth, you know? And fucking, they, they, Tim was just beating on the fucking uh, couch, you know, thing, like the chair, like, real fast, Brrr. And then fucking Fred was playing the fucking guitar parts with no fucking, just, just playing them with no amp or anything. And then Seth was like, ooh, 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 ooh. All right, next one. All right, all right, we'll play this, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, I taped it. <laughs> like, I was, and then after that, too, they were like, oh, that was cool. Like, because at the time, it was like on TV, like it was like unplugged, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, I got anal cunt unplugged. <laughs> and then um, I let, I let te uh, they went like somewhere to some fucking dude's house and they took my tape recorder with them and they recorded like a fucking seven inch there or something with it, you know? <laughs> Which is cool, you know? Very cool, man. Very they cool. They were cool to hang out with. And um, yeah, I mean, I was sad to, when Seth passed away because he was a fucking nut. Um, Fred is the man and Tim is the man too. Right. Like I still I texted with Tim the other day. I'm still friends with these people after like thirty, you know, almost thirty years, a lot of people. It's just I don't know, man. I mean social media is cool, but yeah. like being friends with people for a long time is cooler, you know. Oh, totally, man. Well, I mean, you you, you almost you almost form this bond with everybody just because of the music. 
and the music just right. the music keeps you together literally like the fact that you're yes. into like dr shrinker and anal cunt and all this stuff like i want to be your friend because that's the shit i want to talk about and if you're gonna still be into that oh. shit 30 years later then i still want to yeah, talk yeah. to you man <laughs> like that's it yeah there's it's a just... lot of people that you know they treat i guess they treat certain music like a, like a trend you know yeah, unfortunately. They, they're scared to listen to it because their fucking wife doesn't like it. You know what I mean? Oh, God. But, you know, I have to give love and affection to my wife, Liz, who, Liz, who listens to me fucking talk so much fucking bullshit about death metal <laughs> that she has, like, been, she knows more about death metal than, like, fucking <laughs> both at the scene. You know? <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I see you got. Uh, she doesn't even. She doesn't even want to know it. She don't want to know. No, it. You know? she's not even into it. But but you talk she about it enough. Yeah. <laughs> you talk about it enough yeah. where she's gonna. She has to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, she's like Dan Loker. Dan Loker calls. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know who that is, darling. Yeah. <laughs> So I see you got a big fat necroharmonic flag in the back there. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah we've been importing a lot of flags and shit. So got one over here too. Holy shit! Been fucking with these a little bit, you know. Obviously, I print shirts. You know, I've been printing shirts for a while. I bought a bunch of shirt printing shit from Roger from Mortician. He taught me basically how to print shirts because I was basically just. You know, he would print them, and I would come to his house, and we would smoke fucking bowl hits for like five fucking hours, <laughs> and then then we then we would go and make the shirts, which felt like we made them in twenty minutes. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, I just watched him print so many times that um, I just I he was you know clearing out the bottom of his apartment and his house. And I bought off. I bought his equipment off him, and I bought all of all the all like through like I did like some death fests and shit. I set up shows, too. Obviously, um, yeah. but that could be like it's a whole other session. <laughs> but fucking, uh, I bought up all of Mortician's old equipment and everything, like all their old amps and Will's practice bass and shit. I didn't get the drum machine though. You know? <laughs> The infamous drum machine. I wanted it though, Roger. <laughs> I, I sold it to someone else though. So. I don't know. Yeah, he better be listening to this. <laughs> that's that's awesome. So you're getting into flags. You print shirts. You're putting out CDs. You're you're starting to play with some tapes or whatever like that. Uh, and and records, records. I'm working on a few like box sets of record things. You know oh. what I mean? I'm working on some. You know, yeah. I mean, I got little things like it's been. It seems like there's nothing happening. But the thing is, like, I don't really. I don't go out of my way to announce every fucking thing I want to do. Right. You know what I mean? Because it would just be like. Not everything happens, you know, yep. also. Sometimes, you know, certain things just don't fucking happen. And that's, you know, at this stage of my life, you know, I set goals and I try to just reach them. And then, you know, I mean, I hope everyone's happy with the products I put out in the end, you know. And I'm happy with them, you know, and like, I don't know. I don't know, you know. I, I hope, you know, I think... From the input that I've got over the years, as far as like my CDs and my CD booklets and like my discography demo CDs, that you know everyone was super fucking stoked on a lot of that shit, and they thought they were like comprehensive and shit. So I was like, all right, all right, that's what you know, because this is what I would want to see, you know, totally, not just two flaps in one fucking picture, you know. No, totally. And and like you said too, you don't pump the shit out of it like you like every every waking moment. So when stuff comes out, it's almost like it's like word of it's like underground word of mouth. It's like, "Oh yeah, there's a fucking fl double phlegm CD. Co Holy shit, when did that come out? That was like a year and a half. Holy crap, it, yeah. it's already been out that long ago and stuff." Oh my god. You know what it is with a lot of my releases and the bands notice, it's just like they were like um 
like nothing in my record label has a fucking barcode on it unless I did like maybe a combo with one or one or two other labels. So like almost all, all of my releases, they don't have fucking barcodes on them because basically like I wasn't ready to be barcoded and fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I basically did underground releases, you know what I mean? And I just didn't want to be fucking, I didn't want to fucking stamp a fucking barcode on my head and be some fucking someone else's sucker. Yeah. So I'd rather <laughs> just deal with the bands alone and then put out, you know, straight up underground shit that's not, you know, pushed to sub, you know, not, I'm not saying it's not good to push it to stores. It's right. good for the bands. But I noticed that the dealings with the stores and the CD distributors and all that fucking bullshit because I basically watched other bands do it first. Yep. I realized that a lot of it became fucking bullshit. So I was like, I ain't doing that shit. Man. <laughs> I'll just, I'll stay here and I'll push this shit out myself, you know? Right. And, and it's been difficult. It's also been very difficult to push out because I'm a one man fucking show here. <laughs> so I've had a few people work for me over the years, but basically like I'm a one man fucking show especially for the last whatever many years. My wife helps me, which I'm lucky. <laughs> and um, that it basically, I've been a one-man show since, like, back when Gut toured here. And uh, Gore-Tex, the rapper, yes. was working for me. Oh, sweet. He worked at Necro Harmonic, you know? And then, um, what do you call it? He moved and fucking, um, what do you call it? I haven't had anyone work here since then. I had uh, me and Raj work together out here, just pumping out band shirts for tours and just just helping the scene, dude. We were fucking injecting fucking merch into Maryland Death Fest bands. Like we would hit up like Romp a Prompt or somebody that we liked and be like, hey, you guys need some fucking shirts? Like we'll bust them out, you know? Yeah. And when you get here, we'll give you some fucking shirts, you know? Yep. Just so they had merch to sell, you know what I mean? Because they were coming a long way, and yep. just to support the fucking underground, man, you know? So. Well, because you just love doing it, man, and we're going to do it regardless. I mean, it's just, uh, we just wanted to fucking, you know, I think we wanted shirts for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> just to be honest. <laughs> that's what it feels like with everything, you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, I want that shirt for myself, you yeah. know? And it's true though. <laughs> you're just like, all right, you know. No, same. Yeah, yeah. We, we made some. Same thing when uh, when I now that I've been uh, doing some collaborating with uh, CDN Records and putting out these demos and and the grotesque infection and all that stuff too. It's because I want a copy of it. I want to see. Right. I want that in my hand again, man. Like it's it like, just like you said, man. It's it's not doing it for the money. I don't give a shit. Right. It's the fact that holy fuck, I have like a complete discography of grotesque infection in my hand. It's unbelievable. Right. It's unbelievable. <laughs> It feels good, right? It totally Doesn't does, it though. Good? It does. And then everybody else, you know, it, it are, are enjoying what... Uh, it makes me feel good, and I've been doing it over and over again. And I feel like, you know, last couple of years, I kind of laid back a little bit, but I'm kind of like, you know, we've been, you know, like, I have to, like, step back every once in a while and kind of just see the business, you know. The thing is, like, I'm also a student of myself, you know what I mean? So basically, like... I'll step back and look at myself and like, what am I fucking up with? Or what are, what do I want to change or do? Or, you know what I mean? Yep. It's just like a fucking, you know? So I basically, you know, I'll try to take in some fucking business fucking, you know, some Napoleon Hill or some shit, you know, <laughs> try to teach me the ways, you know, <laughs> totally think and grow rich, you know, <laughs> But you never grow rich, you know, just putting out fucking music. And then also the, the landscape changed as far as like bands putting out the music too. You know what I mean? So now it's like the record label became a thing that's like, eh, you know, do we fucking need you anymore? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, you might have needed me years ago. You might still need me, but you might not too. I mean, it depends. How much you want to go to the post office, I guess. Yeah, it's exactly you know I mean? it. That's exactly it. If you're like it. me, you're there every fucking day, day and night, and you live by the post office. 
And then, <laughs> or, you know, your pet metal picked up or whatever you got going on. Yeah. And then, you know. How far are you? That's what you want to do. How... That's what you want to do yeah. in life, you know. If you're in a band, you can get in that zone, you know. And yeah, exactly. You can, you can push your shit hard, hard as fuck, I mean. Yep. But the problem is, you know, can you work your job and do it? Can you, you know what I mean? Yep. Like I've taken also, I left my job to do this full time, you know, with no t-shirt press, just fucking, I think like eBay or some, and the record label. And I, uh, basically, thank you for PayPal. I want to shout you out, PayPal. <laughs> you fucking, <laughs> you changed my life. <laughs> It's true, though. Thank it's you. true. Yeah. So after PayPal, <laughs> like, my life was changed. I, I worked for Universal Studios, too. So you think, you know, you stay there, you know? Like, that's an awesome fucking job. But I started to branch out. I moved away from, you know, where I lived in New Jersey. And then I put out, you know, just started getting ser really serious about just trying to flip my fucking releases you know what i mean like put out this try to you know turn it into this you know trade all these record labels you know what i mean for their releases then sell them yep. then next release you know what i mean it just was just keeps going like that you know and if <laughs> you know you have to be pretty fucking dedicated towards like doing that too because basically like it takes all day and night to stay I'm sure you spend a lot of time editing videos, uploading. Oh. oh my God! You know you're like on the. You must be on the Gary V fucking program. Hi right? <laughs> Gary V. <laughs> it's so it's so it's so true though, man. Like he brings up good. I don't know. I don't. I, obviously, we're not going to get into Gary V, but he's just one of those you know Instagram <laughs> Instagram YouTuber influencer guys that is just like you got to pump your shit. You got to fucking go hard. You see everybody else just sitting behind and waiting for shit to come to them. You gotta fucking go hard, go Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, you know, everywhere you can go and push and pump and do everything you can and eventually, you know, the fruits of your passion is will keep we'll, doing it over and over and over again. It fucking pays off, man. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I feel like even I, I don't even do that and I see that doing some promotion pays off, you know what I mean? So Anyone that's in a band out there, just go fucking, just go crazy. You're going to feel like you're posting the same shit, but you got to flip it up and you have a lot of art, you know? I think having a lot of art is like a big thing for bands, yep. you know, like, because people see your art before they even see your fucking listening to music. Yep. So it's like, you're going to have pretty fucking sick art and then people will, then people will listen to your fucking music, yep. you know? Exactly. Which, which is kind of fucked up, you know? It is kind of fucked up, but... Well, everybody judges true. the book by the cover, though. That's how it is, right? That's right. It's totally right. what it is. I mean, I mean, how many times back in the day, too, I mean, obviously, again, no internet, uh, that you would go into a record store or, you know, wherever else, or t even just a tape trading list, and just see pictures and be like, that's a cool cover. I think I'm going to try that one. That's a cool cover. I'm going to try that one. And you base pretty much everything off of the first look, like you said, artwork. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I have a few things. Like, I busted out from years ago. Like, this is like one of my tape trading lists where I wrote down all the fucking bands of, like, I had the, the you know, recordings of, you know what I mean? And then I would send these copies out. This is two sided, too. <laughs> and then I would send copies of that out to people, and I would send out the updates. And then I would, you know, tape trade with other fucking freaks, you know? It was probably like 20, 30, 50, 100 people that basically, like, you know, we would trade our lists up, and that's how, you know. It's so I, much it's just work, weird eh? how much I got into it, like, you know? <laughs> it's just like, like a drug. It like, is. It is, though. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's because because luckily, you're yeah you're excited you're excited to get mail. That's the fuck. That's the best thing is get is getting to going to the mailbox and finding packages and like you said right. just and just digging for new shit all the time. And it was and you love it so much that it was so much work, but it wasn't work though. No, it doesn't feel like any work at all, dude. No, because at this point in my life too, 
I've lived, you know, I basically feel like I've lived, you know, my, my life, you know, <laughs> to the point where, you know, I almost feel like, all right, Necroharmonic, you did that already. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, no, no, I did. I didn't do it all. I didn't do everything I wanted to do with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so basically, you know. So there's still lots I to do. Lived, I live this life, you know, like I also, since I've been like a young kid, you know, like, um, like finding comic books and I lived above a comic book store and I found comic books in the garbage cans with their fucking covers ripped off and I brought them to school and I flipped them for money. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe I, I took like, te- you know, I was like giving them like four comics for a quarter versus the quarter that they cost, you know? Yeah. And then basically that was, that was like, you know, I was probably was like seven or eight years old at the time, you know? <laughs> Ever since then, I just got the bugs and fucking selling and shit. But, you know? But, so, you know, as the years went on, then then when breakdancing was hot, like, I would take fat laces and sell them for double. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> that just shows how old I am, right? <laughs> I love breakdancing myself too, man. I was there. I don't give a fuck, though. You know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't even think about age at all or give a fuck about any of that. Because I feel like we're all the same age. We always have been. I saw your other guests on here, too. Enrique, Slasher Dave, uh, Robin. Yeah. And, um, you know, we all still live like we're fucking 16 years old or 20 years old. We don't give a fucking fuck about anything, you know? Honestly, man. I'm sure... Everybody I know is like that too, you know. Yeah. So are you, so are you, dude. Just to be honest. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. it's true, dude. I mean, I I can't. I don't know what else to do now. Right. I, <laughs> am, man. I mean, it's fun though. I mean, at least you're staying busy and creative, and you know, you're building your movie and you're building up your brand. You know what I mean? That's the best you could do, man. Just keep flipping up your fucking logos and whatever, man. Yeah, you know, that's like, exactly. Exactly. I'm looking forward to everything that you're going to put out, and uh, I'm watching you, man. I'm watching you. Thanks, man. Thanks. I, know, I know also <laughs> we didn't talk about the horror shit, because I'm also hard on the horror shit. Like, you were, you and Dave were shooting the shit about that, and that's also my shit, too. But I kind I guess I don't really put that out there as much. You know, there's a few people know that I fuck with that. Yeah. But I was really big on the horror movie trading collection shit. Yes. And the, uh, you know, so all my shit was like, you know, I was into the same ones, some of the same ones as you guys, but I like to go deep into the fucking, you know, Tetsuwa and the fucking guinea pig series with yep. the flowers of flesh and blood, you know? Those those new that, guinea pigs that, suck. Do you see them? Um i seen parts of it. I didn't think they sucked, but yeah. I think, like, they'll be appreciated as time goes on. You know what I mean? Right. And also, if you've never seen that, then maybe you'll appreciate it more. You know what I mean? And also, when we were watching the guinea pig stuff, you know, it was really... The first stuff I ever saw was super faded and fucking, like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was in Japanese... And, like, I didn't know what the fuck... I still don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. I don't even think I've watched it in English. <laughs> but, um, you know, it just spins the fucking color wheel, you know, red, green. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, but... I went down that zone, you know, yeah. Japanese shit, you know. Well, because with, yeah. with, with, with that guinea pig series back then also, uh, there was a lot of controversy behind a lot of it because some people weren't sure if it was real or fake or whatever. Yeah. They couldn't tell, right? right? So that was that was kind of the allure of the guinea pigs back then, like like the, the, the early parts of the series or whatever. Right. It's, yeah. It's fucking, it's, it's, it's scary, man. Some of that it's shit's... It's pretty scary. I mean, the first time I had watched it, I felt dirty. Yeah. I was like, oh my god! Like, what the fuck did yeah. I just watch? Dude? Literally. You know? And then you know, seeing aftermath for the first time. Oh my gosh! Deal. Yes. It's like, oh shit, dude! You know? Wow. I heard you talking about the cannibal ferox with the animal deaths. Like, yeah. I guess I guess I'm totally, you know, I didn't. I just they went right over my head. I didn't even notice them. You know? oh. There was just so much 
good dialogue in some of these movies too, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, good dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, tape trading, even with horror movies back then, um, everybody, like, everything was, not everything was, every, a lot of the unrated stuff was bootlegged. Right, like it was Japanese. Right. It was a lot of Japanese laser discs and European laser discs and stuff like that. So you or had Dutch, Dutch or, subtitles. Dutch, Dutch, exactly. So you had to go in the back of like Gore Zones and Fangorias to find those, you know, those 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 right. pen pal letters of the tape trading yeah. of video old video search of Miami. You know, yes. You go to like video search of Miami. Or the dude that did Rotten Cotton. He's Sean. Sell, yep. Like, that shit. Blackest remember, Heart I Media. something from him. Yep. Blackest Heart Media. Yeah, man. I bought a couple lo- other guys. There was a guy from Florida who was in um, some band. And he would be at the horror convention. And uh, It was Luminous, L- Luminous Video Works. Oh, Luminous Video. Yeah. Like, I really stalked those guys and their catalog out all year long. You just just waiting for them to come back to the convention at um, Chiller Theater. Okay. And I would stalk their shit so fucking (laughs) hard, dude. And I bought a lot of their videos. And uh, I would like to make jokes with the big big guy. He was the Mexican fucking Santo collector. You know what I mean? If you remember. (laughs) Yeah, Santo. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'd ask him about the Santo movies, even though I never watched them. I was really (laughs) hunting down, like, the bizarre, like, um, Giala. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Italian crime movies eventually became a huge thing for me. And then, uh, but, and then there was, there was some other little sub stands, too, the guys that sold the shitbag fucking stuff. Not 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 the bills above type bullshit, but like the other shit, you know, right. like other like really sick horror movies or cr- Italian crime movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had uh, we had in London, Ontario. It was Revoke Prodigies. If you remember that one. What's it called? Revoke, R E V O K. It sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had he had catalogs full of shit, like you said, like it was like the Japanese. I, oh yeah, yeah. I have that. I have that. I have that too. Yeah, and Chaz yeah. and Chaz yes. Balloon was one of the big ones too that that got rid of a lot mm-hmm. of uh, the under, right. the underground shit too. R.I.P. Chaz Balloon, yeah. That's fucking right. Yeah, yeah, his magazines were fucking deep red. Holy shit! I mean, Charlie's Family. That's like one of my favorites. Jim Van Bever, I love you. <laughs> Basically, make another. You know, make your cannibal. I mean, make your. Uh, your fucking uh, crocodile movie, please, dude. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Everyone wants to fucking see that, dude. And yeah. I want to fucking see it hard. I saw the preview of just the little snippet you made, and I'm ready for the whole fucking thing, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, and if, please. And, and if you're not familiar with Jim Van Bieber, uh, he's the one, the, his, his big movie is uh, Deadbeat at Dawn. And if you're and, and if you're a fan of Impetigo... That they have they have a, a sample on their Horror of the Zombies album and uh, totally man that's and I'm gonna I'm gonna give Impetigo and Mortician big props for getting me deep into a lot of the underground horror movie shit also because I mean those those two guys well two bands they fucking had all the Italian they had the guinea pig on there they had the Jim Van Bieber they had all this fucking weird samples that were just like unheard of I, I didn't know where to look didn't know where to start and then eventually when i got into start like doing the tape trading and, and all that kind of stuff with the with the horror movies all of a sudden it's like oh that's where that's from oh man that's where that's from yeah. holy shit <laughs> yeah and will romer is a maniac of the uh collecting scene like i talked to a woman he told me about, you know, all the pre-orders he was waiting for, for certain, like, DVDs and shit, which is brutal as fuck, you know, or, or Blu-rays, I guess. Yeah. I never even collected any Blu-rays, because, like, I just, like, like, the collecting, like, got out of control for me, man. Yeah. I ended up with, you know, going down the VHS lane and the DVD lane, and then after that, I just fucking... Went down the torrent lane, basically. You know, I don't know. Well, yeah, we have enough, That's unfortunate right? Unfortunate because I want to, ha- you know, have the physical shit. 
But um, of course, I want to watch the movies more than I wanted the physical shit. Right. You know I mean? No, totally, totally. And we've collected a lot of shit on our own, right? We've dug, yeah. we've dug, and and we've dug, and we've dug, and we bought a lot and supported a lot. So it, we're allowed yeah. to do a little. We're allowed to do a little bit like that here. And yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave Midnight Media probably like two G's over the years, you know, <laughs> collecting up the foreign horror magazine books, like the hard covers and shit. Right. Like that was like my fucking passion. You know? Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, yeah. So, what's in the future for Roy then? What's going on here? You said you got some box sets. You got I'm some... making tapes. Like I said, I'm putting out a few new tapes. We're actually going to work on a tape of a release of Flem. You know, issue oh. Flem. Um, I got extra Flem that I was thinking about. Maybe you know we can put that on there or fuck with it. Uh, we're going to probably reissue Womb on tape. Ooh. The Womb album, uh, the Womb demo, sorry. And then uh, there's another Womb unreleased album kind of demo thing. So that might also come out. And then um, I'm going to be putting out Incantation on tape too. So I just talked to John about doing some of that. Sweet. And then I'm going to be putting out Mortician on tape too. Oh, so Jesus. those are some of my newer things that I'm fucking with, but I'm fucking with like a bunch of other shit too. And I mean, they can just go on and on and on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's I good. Can make, like, yeah. You know, yeah. my own podcast to you know talk about all the shit I want to do and what I am doing. But yeah. it's 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 just like I just chip at it every day, you know. And uh, yep. You know, my kids were making fun of me or talking to me uh, yesterday, and my daughter was like, you definitely have the ADHD or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, whatever, I make it work to my advantage as much as I can. You know? It's so true, Anyone though, man. Anyone else that has it, hopefully you can too, man. Well, it's not... Don't a- take those fucking crazy drugs and put you to sleep all the time, you know? <laughs> you know, it, it's not ADHD, it's called passion. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes I told I told uh, my kids and my wife, too. I was like, I don't finish every project, but I was like, I finished a bunch of them, right? Did, look at how many I finished, right? Totally. Lot, you know? <laughs> so. so we can go on your website, which is necroharmonic.com. Is that what it is? Yeah, you can go to necroharmonic.com or necroharmonicbigcartel.com. Those are like, you know, that's like my website, website. Um yeah, that's where I sell whatever and uh, shirts. Basically, sometimes yeah, sometimes I'll keep you know certain bands. We put out stuff for longer periods of time, and then other stuff I just put it out and just retire it too because I I want the shirts to be a little limited and weird, you know? Yeah. Like I don't want to you know just keep fucking doing the same things over and over and over again, uh, you know? So sometimes. They become so fucking stupidly limited that I'll end up making like six of them, and then I'm like, all right, fuck this one. <laughs> and then I'm not like fuck this band, but yeah. I'm just like fuck this shirt. <laughs> like let's just make it that fucking limited. Boom. <laughs> and Pain Eater would be a good example of that, you know? All right. Yeah. Yeah. One shirt I did, just like maybe six of them, and I just retired it. Right <laughs> so I'm gonna try to make some more shirts from them too. So Sweet. there's a whole list of bands that I want to make shirts for and bands I talk to about yeah. making shirts and uh, lifelong yeah, friends I'm excited to make those. Yeah. They're lifelong friends. So it's not like you're going to lose contact with anybody. That Yeah. Yeah. Like Alex was on here earlier, like me and him talk about, you know, some shirts I'm going to make. And um, there's this, I have like a lot of agoraphobia screens from over the years that, you know, we made shirts with, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, cool, man. Well, uh, I don't want to keep you for too long. Uh, I got I got to take care of some shit myself. But, uh, right. man, we can fucking go. go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's dark now, so I may, maybe I'll go for a bike ride or something. <laughs> <laughs> gotta good. gotta keep the blood flowing, man. We're getting fucking pent I up. I know. I think I gotta I gotta get like you, man. I gotta get out there, bro. Dude, you know, I think. Yeah, man. I think I'm getting too fat. <laughs> I'm getting too large. <laughs> so I think I need to get out there and do what you're doing. Get some bike. You know what? I, I don't know about bike riding because I don't have a bike, but oh. I need to walk. Maybe something. <laughs> 
but that's the thing, though. In 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 between in, in between everything you're doing, man, just step outside for half an hour. Fucking go boot around. Fucking get the blood I going. I do. I do step outside, but it's usually only for five minutes, and it's for a different reason, you know. <laughs> usually, there's a bunch of blue smoke around me afterwards, and I go back inside. <laughs> Well, Roy, I fucking I can't wait to fucking meet you and actually hang out with you, man. This is this is yeah, man. It's fucking. We're gonna have a lot to chat about, and we're gonna get up. We need to get up together in human form. Yeah, definitely. After Thanks all this. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for doing a service to all death metal mankind and womankind. We're trying. Everybody out there, obviously, hopefully, a thousand more people support this. Thousands. And then when you put that stream on, there's thousands of cats watching us. And uh, hopefully, you know, the bands also, everyone that's in a crisis now with the fucking bullshit going on, I hope everyone can support all the fucking bands out there yep. by buying their merch or doing something to help them, man. Because if they can't go out and tour, they're going to need help somehow. So, totally. you know, you got to support them, you know. And then when you put out your DVD, second deal, man, you put a lot of work into your world. So I'm looking fucking forward to that, man. Sweet, dude. Right on, man. Appreciate it. And like, and like Roy says, man, right. fucking share as much as you can. Buy merch. Like, comment. Whatever you can. Because we're all stuck. We're all fucked right now. And we need everybody. Do it afterwards, too, though. Do it afterwards. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> as soon as this is done, just keep fucking sharing this thing, man. <laughs> Yeah, dude, buy that merch afterwards, too, man. Bands are going to need help, bro. This is going to be, this is a fucked up situation, man. I mean, what are we all going to put on? I mean, some bands already have gas masks, so they're, the, right. you know, blasphemies ready, you know? Yeah. But the rest of us, you know. <laughs> totally. <laughs> all right, Roy, man. Appreciate it, bro. All right. Support. Thanks Sup for Support, man. Later, fans. Support. I love you, fans. I love the fans. <laughs> it's all about them, man. If it wasn't for them, there wouldn't That's be us. I'm saying. I love the fans. I'm doing this for you, bro. And myself a little. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because 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 you want a phlegm CD in your hand. I want, because this is why, you know? I want one of the shirts. <laughs> So make sure to go to Necro Harmonic. He's got all kinds of fucking underground shit and some weird stuff and rare stuff. Like he says, he's going to limit limit the number of what he's printing off and records. I mean, there's no more there's no more uh, crematory uh, double fucking gatefolds here anymore. But you have some tapes that you can fucking yeah. buy. Yeah, and we'll be repressing a record version of that, an additional two LP record version of that stuff. So. Oh, I got a bunch of extra covers for that too. So sweet, it's just gonna be a little different. Right on, man. Right on. Okay, man. Appreciate it, bro. You too, my man. Take it easy. Later. Woo Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's fucking awesome, man. Roy, Roy's an old school dude, man. He's. He's been there, done that. He knows. He knows what's going on. And like, and like he mentioned too, he keeps it underground. There's just something, something about it, man. It's fucking awesome, and it just feels good. All right, what do we got here? So tomorrow, tomorrow we got Vanessa hanging out with us, and she is a fucking busy, busy lady, as you can tell. Wooden stake. Cauldron Burial, Voltrath, Surgikill, and Surgikill, if you don't know who's in that band, then you better fucking listen tomorrow. She's working on Hex Coven Records, all kinds of killer shit, and we're gonna, like you said, if you go on the Growl Facebook page or whatever, check it out, go check the links out, uh, we have everything up. And tomorrow is going to be a super fun show once again. And uh, please stay tuned. So like Roy said, fucking share, comment, support, buy. Fucking help out, man. This is all we can do with each other, all right? Thanks a lot, peeps. Ugh. I'm getting too old for this shit sometimes. <laughs>